You make a really good armrest. Oh, if only I had a little human growth hormone. What's up guys, Derek, moreplaysmoredapes.com. Today we're gonna to be reacting to a video I am shocked I have not come across. It is, should short people take human growth hormone? It was suggested to me on my feed the other day. Um, it's by a channel called Seeker with over 5 million subscribers. And, um, you know, presumably a seen as a credible channel or else it wouldn't have such a big audience unless they just have absolutely ridiculous videos, which we will find out shortly. But should be interesting. We've seen some nonsense before, on YouTube with some big channels. There was, ah, fuck, what was that? There was one, it was like, uh, it was about what steroids actually do to you. And it was like some of the side effects it listed were just absolutely way off the mark. And it asserted some brutal claims about like uh, why people flew off the handle and had roid rage and all of these things that were just, you know, wildly inaccurate. I forget what that one was called. I'll put up a card in the corner if I can remember what it is because it's not doing it justice, me trying to <laughs> summarize it like this. But anyways, should short people take growth hormone? We I've done videos on this channel before about um, idiopathic short stature, dwarfism, um, and the administration of GH, concord aromatase inhibition for short shorter individuals who are like clinically diagnosed or otherwise have um, like an unexplainable reason for their lack of height and deploy, you know, pharmacologic intervention in order to accomplish, you know, getting a few extra inches out. And um, let's see what they say, dude. And we'll uh, get into it. You make a really good armrest. Oh, if only I had a little human growth hormone. Hey guys, Julia here for D News. I've always said I'm average height, but growing up I had oddly tall friends. I wish there was some way I could make myself taller. I now know I'm about average height for a woman, which is approximately 5'4", but there are some vertically challenged people who aren't so lucky. Is there something they could do? Well, some people take human growth hormone to build lean body mass or to add a few extra inches to their height. Human growth hormone is a hormone naturally produced in Okay, so when they, she says to, they take it for lean body mass or to add a few extra inches to their height, when you're an adult, like no one's taking the shit for height. Like when you're fully grown and you've had plate closure, you're not going to be getting more inches out of your body, at least from what I, the literature suggests and from what I've seen. I do think there's something to be got, got out of it, but it's not going to be anything significant like you see in the like idiopathic short stature data. You're seeing gains of like, you know, a few inches in some cases um, with aggressive dosing. Um, we'll get into the... Uh, the actual dosing parameters actually you might as well bring up now. This is the clinically broken down dosing protocols that are typically deployed. So we have children with idiopathic short stature do not attain normal adult height, improvement of adult height with treatment of HGH at doses of 0.16 to 0.28 milligrams per kilogram per week is modest, usually less than four centimeters. They remain short as adults. The benefit obtained seems dose dependent and benefits of seven to eight centimeters have been reported with higher doses of 0.32 to 0.4 milligrams per kilogram per week. And there are other studies that evaluate like aromatase inhibition and you know the prevention of estrogen receptor signaling to try and like prolong growth plate closure and then using growth hormone concurrently to try and keep pushing the height vector while you inhibit the growth plate closure from lack of estrogen um, effects. Um, and this dosage, what it breaks down to 0.4 milligrams per kilogram. So I don't know, like if you're a child who is, you know, short, what would you weigh? Like, I, I don't really know how to <laughs> quantify this necessary per, per kilogram. Let's just say they are I don't know, dude, like 40 kilograms maybe for like, I don't know what age this would be to be honest. Um, so 16, this, this is just like an example by the way. So 16 milligrams times by three to get the uh, IUs per week. So this would be 48 IUs of pharma grade GH per week divided by seven. You're looking at a dose of 6.85 IUs per day of pharma shit. So of like nortotropin, serostim, you know, sizin, humotrope, like whatever it is. This is a pretty expensive and uh, sizable dose. Like this is more than what most bodybuilders can afford and take, to be honest, or at least from the pharma grade perspective, a lot of bo uh, bodybuilders are deferring to, you know, like black market, um, underground generic shit, which still works by the way. But anyways, circling back, the uh, actual definition of sh idiopathic short stature would be individuals that are 
Less than five foot four for males, less than 4'11 for females, and no detectable cause for it. So again, if you are a growth hormone deficient individual, you know, like Lionel Messi, for example, um, if you guys don't know, Lionel Messi was probably wouldn't have even ended up being a star in football if it wasn't for his deployment of growth hormone. The guy has literally built his fucking body off of PEDs. But yes, it was prescription. He had a prescription for it from a little literal clinical deficiency. But it kind of, it's kind of interesting though, because it's like one of the top players on the fucking planet wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for high doses of human growth hormone. Quite interesting. But anyways, getting back to the video, you're not going to gain several inches in adulthood from this shit. But as a child or like pre-adolescence, yeah, there is data that is looking at this exact thing. High amounts during childhood and adolescence. But a study published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism found that secretion decreases with age by around 14% per decade. The hormone is produced in the pituitary gland, located at the base of the brain. HGH tells the liver to produce a hormone called insulin-like growth factor 1. The two hormones work together to tell the bones, muscles, and other tissues to grow. But due to various genetic conditions like Turner syndrome, SHOX deficiency, and Noonan syndrome, some people just don't produce the hormones, so they tend to be smaller than average. But according to one endocrinologist, if they take synthetic human growth hormone, they could gain 1 to 4 inches. But some parents are giving the hormone to their perfectly healthy but short children. Yeah, yeah, I've actually done a video on the deployment of human growth hormone in high school students that are basketball players for getting to the NBA potentially. Interesting subject. Because in our Western culture, we value tallness. Studies show that taller people are generally more respected and might have higher IQs. And according to several studies published in the Journal of Applied Psychology and another published in the Journal of Human Capital, over the course of a lifetime, taller folks tend to earn more money. I wonder why the higher IQ thing would be, if that's actually legit, because it's like, what, you have like a bigger brain because you're a bigger human maybe? Like, uh, I, or you have like... I don't know, more growth factors that helps with like neurogenesis or something. Like, I don't know, that's kind of interesting. A lot more. According to lead authors of the applied- Yao Ming's a fucking genius if you didn't know. In psychology study, a tall person will enjoy literally hundreds of thousands of dollars of earnings advantage. But giving your perfectly healthy but short kid HGH might not be the best idea. First of all, it's pretty expensive, costing as much as $50,000. For spending all that money, it might not even add height to those without a deficiency. Plus, it can cause some very serious health issues. So I wonder if that's 50,000 a year or 50,000 in totality because like I could definitely see some individuals like weighing out what that ROI is like if your kid's going to have more earning potential and be more respected and all the shit that she said, you know, does that pay itself off? Is it worthwhile? I don't know. I'm not suggesting it is or it isn't. It's just it's just interesting. I don't know. I don't know what that investment looks like in terms of pre or what, but like pharma grade GH is expensive as fuck. Too much HGH can cause a condition called acromegaly, which basically causes hands and feet to swell. It causes overly pronounced facial features and excessive sweating. HGH can also trigger cardiomyopathy, osteoporosis, menstrual irregularities, and impotence. Excessive sweating, that's one I didn't even know according to a study published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine. And one study published in the journal Acta Medica Scandinavica found that the condition can increase the risk of premature death from heart problems. But still, knowing all these risks, people still take HGH for more superficial reasons. Yeah, so I think it goes overlooked how many bodybuilder deaths have been contributed to by growth hormone use. Everyone looks to anabolic androgenic steroids, but like growth hormone is a huge, huge, huge stimulatory input on actual left ventricular hypertrophy, cardiomegaly. These are things that are going to be exacerbated significantly by growth hormone deployment. And it's kind of, uh, I don't know, I feel like it gets overlooked a little bit because it's definitely not just the anabolic steroids. It is also the concurrent use of growth hormone for some of these like mega sized individuals that I think is just another contributing factor. So if your kid doesn't have a hormone deficiency and you're thinking of spending upwards of $50,000 to try and boost their height, think of all the side effects first. Being short isn't really a health condition and plenty of people wind up being just fine looking up at the world. Love science, love learning? Want more hand-picked stories delivered straight to your inbox? Sign up for our newsletter. There's a link at the top of the description. 
Oh, wow, that's a fucking long outro. And if you're wondering how being short is actually an advantage, check out this episode right here. A whopping 40-year-long study recently published in PLOS One monitored over... Jeez, <laughs> they're going to a study about how you're probably gonna outlive the taller people if you're shorter. Fuck, dude. Like, it's one thing to just talk about why being, like, shorter is not a big deal, but it's another thing to go... <laughs> into another video to like hyper justify it to a point that you're gonna tell anybody who's tall <laughs> that they're gonna die early essentially because they are not shorter. Uh. Recently published in PLOS One monitored over 8,000 Japanese American men throughout their lifetime. And they found that being short means living a longer life. So, so good, you're gonna die. You might only live to like 60 or 70 and it's more likely that you'll die earlier because you're tall. Fucking fantastic, dude. <laughs> Like, I feel like the fact that it's like, she's so stoked about it and is like saying it like it's a positive message. It's like, I don't know. It's like, I feel like you're trying to appease a crowd that might've, you think might've got offended by the video so much that you're then ostracizing another demographic and being like, yeah, you're gonna fucking die earlier, but too bad. Like you guys are gonna be all right. Uh, that was an interesting tangent that took, so. Anyways, if you want to see more details on, I've done videos, teenager taking AIs and HGH to grow taller, kind of broke down the pharmacology as well as height biohacking using pharmacology. And it is interesting how things have like manual manipulation potential to some extent um, through just like, you know, synthetic means essentially. And I don't know, like, I guess this was kind of like a sweeping overview. Like the only thing I really learned is that you sweat more when you take a fuck ton of GH apparently, which is kind of interesting and kind of weird. But um, I don't know, I really, <laughs> that was not overly informative, but um, I guess they didn't mention the actual metrics of height changes, which you're not gonna go from like five feet to six feet if you administer, you know, high doses of growth hormone. But I don't know, maybe I should dig into some of the literature and see what like the max doses used were and what the actual amounts yielded were. It seems like the maximum amount yielded is in general like four inches, but I think it depends on the, actual diagnosis as well and deficiency of like, do you have a deficiency? Are you somebody who's clinically in need or are you just like a normal person who's trying to go super physiological essentially? Because I suspect those individuals have a lot less leeway, but I don't know, interesting nonetheless. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like the actual exploration of this pharmacology um, is what interests me more so than its actual like practical application necessarily. Um, although it would have been nice for, uh, I don't know, like I wish I understood some of this shit when I was younger, like not that I was excessively fat or anything, but just understanding this stuff, I think it's prudent to know at a young age how hormones interact in your body and what kind of lifestyle habits can be impactful on hormone synthesis and whatnot. Like if you're a fat kid, for example, you might end up inhibiting your height by a couple inches for all we know. Like the amount of excess aromatization you get from increase in adipose tissue if you're like a fat fuck like it's more motivation to not be a fat fuck if you are if you know you're going to inhibit your height because it's like yeah you could rationalize in your head for example like oh i'll just lose the weight you know when i'm uh you know in a few years or you know when i have time and i'm not like slammed with homework and fucking this and that yeah but maybe the time is now maybe you need to lose it if you want to reach like full maturation and height you never know so um definitely uh interesting breakdown to some extent, but I don't know. I was hoping, <laughs> I was hoping for more uh, elucidation of like the dosages deployed and kind of what um, the studies actually showed from uh, from that. But anyways, let me know what you think. Comments all much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoreandates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoreandates, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. Uh, preventative medicine platform and hormone replacement therapy platform as well. Get self-service labs as well as high quality medical oversight, um, regardless if you're natural or an individual on hormone replacement or anything like that, we do it all. Um, as well, Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode pre-workout formulas that design from scratch, recommended diet model for gaining muscle and sports performance. And I think this would be a useful diet to follow if you are somebody trying to maximize your, you know, like bone potential, like in youth, you know, getting your micronutrients in, getting high quality protein in and a sufficient amount of it. Like protein intake is going to be dictating of height as well at the end of the day. Like these are things to be mindful of. Like obviously you're probably not in a position where you're starving yourself from lack of calorie intake, but I mean, I would still be 
mindful of micronutrient intake for the support of adequate testosterone production, sex hormone synthesis, growth hormone and downstream IGF-1 production from having adequate carbohydrate intake. Like these are all things that are prudent to evaluate even in your youth and understand ahead of time because you're actually gonna expedite your track uh, to you know your genetic potential faster and potentially even give yourself a heightened genetic potential from understanding and deploying the stuff at an earlier age like having a high quality diet model that is not just mindful of macros but also micros very very important and that is uh, linked in the video description video description as well my recommended kind of like idiot proofed guide to dieting um, or gaining muscle and sports performance like i said um, in addition, uh, recommended, I don't know, hair loss prevention products, uh, clothing company that sponsors me, anything else that supports me, it's all down there in the video description. Much appreciated when you guys use my links, codes, etc. And that's it. Talk to you guys soon.